morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's so good to have each and every one of you here this morning, and it's good to be able to come together and to worship the Lord on this Sunday. This morning, I just want to say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I am so glad that we can rejoice and be glad in this day. Today, we are just going to be celebrating and rejoicing in this day. We're going to begin this day with the song, All Creatures of Our Lord and King. So let's begin and sing this song together. And followed by that, we'll have our announcements and then our giving moment. So let's sing together. Just raise your voices, all creatures of our God and King. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. The burning sun with golden beam, the silver moon with softer gleam.
going to sing again and followed by that will be a testimony from all of so let's raise our voices again and we're going to sing grace alone and then we're going to hear a testimony from all of and then we'll sing again and then we'll have our prayer so let's sing together morning. As I've been preparing for this testimony, I was directed to Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 to 25, which relate to the theme of our meeting, spurring one another on. The passage itself is referring to the newfound confidence that those who trust in Jesus have to enter his presence. Verse 25 in particular talks about spurring each other on towards love and good deeds. This passage puts it quite strongly. The Christian life should be active, not passive. It should be a life full of love and good deeds as we continue Jesus' mission to reach the world with the gospel. Christianity is not a faith which God intended to be lived out alone. Encouraging others and being encouraged by others are both central to the life of an obedient believer. Last Sunday was the first time in a long time uh, that Keith and I met together at the army and it was wonderful singing, praising and worshipping together. 
It was also a time of encouragement and fellowship. For me personally, this was really helpful. As I have reflected those verses, it has made me think about my own life, and in particular, those moments that I have felt those people who have spurred me on in life. I remember as a teenager, I loved athletics and was a member of an athletics club. You might find that difficult to believe, but I wasn't too bad in middle distance running and ran in competitions as well as representing my school. It's amazing how the bystander effect can affect performance and spur you on to do your best. My dad would always be at the finishing line on school sports day and he would be cheering me on and I could see him from a distance and I would do my best to get to the finishing line. I've also had some wonderful Christian role models that have demonstrated care, compassion and encouragement uh, during my faith journey. Those who have believed in me and taken an interest and been active in my discipleship. Adam Peaty, uh, the Olympic gold medalist, was asked why he thought the British swimming team had done so well in the Olympics. He said it came down to one word, belief. This suggests that to spur one another on requires us to be confident and faithful in our endeavours. As Christians, we can be successful in reaching our goal by encouraging one another and in doing so, bringing people to Christ. I thank God for those who have been instrumental in encouraging me on my faith journey, but I also pray that he will help me to do the same for those around me. May God bless you.
Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to come together. We thank you for, for the opportunity that we have just to encourage one another, to spur one another on, to be there for one another. Father, we know that sometimes it's difficult. We know that this year and a half has not been easy. But Father, we know that you have been there. We know that you are still there, that you are going to be there throughout all that happens. Father, I do ask right now that you be with those who are ill, who have not been able to join us and who may not be able to join us when we get together. Just be with them. Lay your hand upon them. Father, we know that you are a mighty God. And Father, I know that you are one that is everywhere. And I thank you for that. I know that you are going to be in all that transpires. And Lord, as we continue to meet together Sunday by Sunday, as we continue to grow Sunday by Sunday, just continue to be with us. Just continue to guide us and direct us in all that we do. I just pray this all in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Olive, for your testimony. And now as we continue on, we're going to have a band number followed by the Bible reading from Keith. And then we'll have our songster number followed by the message from Randy. So let's just continue on in our service today.
reading this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 19 to 25. A call to persevere in faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. It's Sunday morning, but instead of getting in uniform to go to church, I'm getting ready to deliver DVDs. Such was my life for much of this last year and a half. The COVID pandemic has changed the way we worship, has it not? Hebrews 10.25 instructs us to ensure that we are not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but to encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The biblical mandate is clear. Believers are not to give up meeting together. But what does that mean for us now? And 
Now, if you're home right now watching this, please don't think I'm pointing a finger at you and condemning you. Please listen to the whole message, all right? Is heeding God's call to meet together still relevant, though? And if so, why? The simple answer is yes, we need to meet together now more than ever, even if our meeting looks different. First, a little perspective. This pandemic, it isn't the first trial Christ's church has faced. And unfortunately, it won't be the last. Over the centuries, believers have endured persecution, torture, illness, starvation, and rejection. Yet through each crisis, they clung to Christ and each other. Even today, the church not only survives, but thrives in places where meeting together is forbidden. Believers find a way to be together because they know they must. Of course, being together can look different depending on circumstances. For example, Paul couldn't physically be with the churches he planted after he was imprisoned, yet he remained present by penning letters to the churches and people he knew and loved. And these letters became the books of the Bible we know as like the Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon. And though unable to be present in person, Paul found a way to stay spiritually and socially connected on purpose. So why did Paul put forth the effort to continue meeting together when no one would have blamed him if he holed up in, in isolation? Why do believers who face persecution today do the same? Why do Christians walk hours to attend a church service in some parts of the world when it would be easier to simply stay home? Because people need each other. Frankly, we need each other more than most of us realize. In my Bible, under the heading, A Call to Persevere in Faith, I find these words. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as the, you see the day approaching. And that's from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. So why should we meet together? Why meet together? We, why should we meet together? We meet together to help each other persevere in faith to spur one another on toward good deeds. Other believers help us hold unswervingly to our faith by encouraging us with their hope when we can't find our own, and by reminding us what, of what is true, because it's easy to, to get swept away by what feels true, by motivating us to be our best selves, when our burdens might bring out our worst selves. The simple act of meeting together gives us access to encouragement when we lack courage, comfort when we are in crisis, counsel when we are confused, prodding when we need purpose. All this is ours if we make it our habit to meet together. Why would we want to live any other way? And thankfully today, we have many ways to meet together. And we've really fleshed those ways out during this pandemic. Live streaming. So many of you right now are watching this service live streamed, either on Facebook or YouTube. Although right now the, the live stream version you're seeing was recorded earlier and is not the actual live meeting that's going on uh, in the hall right now. But while the Apostle Paul had to resort to ink and parchment and wait weeks for a response, we can simply open up our laptops, pull out our phones, 
or stream the service on our smart TVs. Another way is to listen, watch, sing, and share. So I would encourage you to watch the whole service from beginning to end. And sure, podcasts abound and you can hear top-notch speakers on, on radio or TV, far better speakers than I am. But this is not the same as worshiping at a local church with folks you know and who know you. Uh, they, folks that love you and care for you or will care for you if you let them know your concern and your need. You need the praise and worship. You need the words of truth you'll, you'll receive from the message. You need to see your pastor and your people. Uh, another way is that we communicate with encouraging emails and posts and communicate. That's something we need to do any and every way that we can. And I, I haven't been that great at, at communicating and I, I ca called out for that early on in this pandemic, and I, I'm so sorry for that, but I know that's a, a shortfall of mine is communicating. But if your church has a Facebook page, and ours does here, the Bedlington Salvation Army does, comment on anything you find encouraging or helpful. Send an email of encouragement to your pastor, staff, or, or leaders. If you need, or if you have a need, let someone know. Don't assume and don't wait. Communicate. And then we can, we can get together via Zoom or FaceTime or Facebook Live or we could go on and on and on with that. But uh, for gatherings like Bible studies, uh, there's a women's, active women's Bible study going on uh, in the Bedlington Corps. Uh, but for small groups, prayer groups, Use Zoom meetings, FaceTime, Facebook Live. We, we may not be able to, to be with other, others physically, but we can see and hear each other. And don't underestimate the value of seeing one another's faces and hearing one another's voices. And then we can call people or, or text. And, and yes, texting is, is easier and faster, but but we, we don't need quick, we need connection. A phone call is a personal way to say, of all the people in the world, I care about you. That said, texts keep us in, connected, you know? And uh, so keep them going. We've been through a lot and it really isn't over yet. And some of you have been isolated for this whole time and getting back out and around other people will not be as easy for you as it is for some, especially those who have had to be out in the public the whole time. We will continue to have different comfort levels for a long time. I hope you've caught on from the message that meeting together doesn't necessarily mean in person, but I hope you have been challenged to continue all the more with meeting together in whatever way you can. And let us not give up meeting together. The next song is a call for the church to arise. And the church can arise and be strong even when we're not able to physically be in the church building. O oh, church, arise.
Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.